Okay, uh, today we're gonna uh, talk about design babies, about that, uh, are they born to succeed, and how will that affect uh, the life of their children? Will it affect their free choice for an authentic life, or will it uh, be just a good opportunity to make our world a better place? Uh, first of all, we are going to discuss, uh, is this an uh, option for future that is realistic or is this just science fiction? Because we know there were a lot of biological techniques uh, that people thought would become future, but actually they are, uh, we are not using them. Like for example, cloning, when a discussion about that appeared, everybody thought that it would become future or we're afraid that it will become future, but none of that happened and it, it's forbidden, of course. And uh, now we should ask uh, whether design babies will become a future, whether it will become our reality, or, it would be, uh, or will it be forbidden just like cloning? So, um, first we will discuss the difference between pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and CRISPR because if we edit uh, genes on babies with CRISPR, we can do it just on one embryo. And if we do it with, uh, if we uh, use uh, pre-diagnostic uh, genetic implantation, uh, then um, we sh uh, should use, uh, uh, we should just choose uh, one of the numerous embryos. Uh, so it's more like we have to destroy some of them and use just one. So it is a bit different. Uh, PGD has uh, some uh, other challenges, while CRISPR has <laughs> many others. <laughs> so um, there are also uh, epigenetic problems, because we never know how it will uh, turn out in reality, how will genes, uh, edited genes behave, uh, how will the person uh, react when uh, in real life? How will society affect that person? Will the genes uh, uh, <coughs> be enough to develop some characteristic? Or will the influence of society rule and uh, uh, make it less visible? And um, uh, one more uh, one important question is also, would society influence uh, the way in which uh, gene editing <coughs> on babies is choose, or which characteristics we choose to avoid, or which characteristic we choose to develop, or uh, will um, uh, the choice of individual parents affect the society, so society will change in a manner <coughs> that uh, parents uh, will guide. So uh, one more uh, one more topic that is um, controversial here is uh, should that uh, if it comes to be a case should it be free choice to design baby or should it be obligation and who should decide about it uh, now um, the question also is why should we do that because there are a lot of benefits we talk about a lot of those benefits earlier. For example, some of them were like uh, editing the disease, editing the disabilities, uh, creating characteristics that will um, uh, 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 make able uh, those babies to have more opportunities in life, possibly better life or more happy. But there are a lot of bad sides, uh, such as that uh, uh, would that affect uh, better future generations? Will they regret it? Uh, and it seems like maybe if we do that, it's like we're programming our descendants uh, with such a manipulation that will make them determined to live one way of life. So uh, one more problem with that, which we also mentioned, is that it seems like if we accept it as a matter of free choice, it will widen the gap between rich and poor. And if we make it obligatory, on the other hand, it can lead society in some kind of totalitarian regime. So 
it is not clear how to avoid this or how can we make uh, things good because uh, either way uh, it will go more on one side or on the other. If uh, it will be just a matter of free choice then maybe just rich people will use it. And one uh, question that I want to discuss here also is the question of identity. How will it affect the identity of those persons and uh, will, how will they uh, deal with it? So, how will we do it if we do it? Uh, it is not clear how to do this because we don't know how exactly the genes will behave. We don't know exact relationship between genotypes and phenotypes. Uh, CRISPR make it easier for us to explore some of the epigenetic characteristics, but it still doesn't uh, make uh, such a big uh, step forward on that field so we can know exactly what the gene is doing what and how the genes will react and interact. So uh, we still don't know how exactly we will do that. If we, for example, edit out some gene or uh, just choose to shut it down, uh, the possibility that we will do it successfully with CRISPR is 40%. And if we choose to uh, edit some DNA letter, possibility we can do it is uh, 20%. Uh, in other words, if we um, edit some embryo, the possibility uh, to, that it will look like we imagine and we try to make it is 1 for 20. Or if we take 20 embryos, maybe just one will turn out the way that we expected. So this uh, technique has uh, to develop a bit more till it will be safe for use. No, for now on, it's simply not realistic, but there are possibilities according to the uh, way it developed till now that it will be possible in the future, but for now we don't know how exactly we will do it. Also, there is a problem of slippery slope that we already mentioned. This is just a reminder that uh, we should draw a line somewhere, maybe, between a disease, disability and just unwanted characteristic or maybe we can uh, just uh, make it possible for people to choose to edit out disability and disease in their uh, children, but um, forbidden them to change some characteristics that are not medical threat. Uh, also, there is a problem of aging, because if we consider it as a serious disease, because it's, it's killing uh, 30 million people over the world, uh, and if we treat it, if we try to, uh, with this gene editing, if we try to uh, edit characteristic that will make our lifespan longer, uh, how will it affect our society? Because we still, uh, we already have a serious problem with overpopulation and there is a problem how will it affect our economy? Because uh, then we have to think about uh, when people will go to retirement if we leave this uh, limitation for people who will be able to work the same, we will have more people that are uh, retired and that state must support, so it will uh, become a really big challenge for our economy. And if we uh, widen the life ability for people to work, if we make it, for example, 75 years or 80, it depends. It, we don't, still don't know will people be able to work if our lifespan will go bigger. So it is not clear will, it, will this solution uh, make any good to the world or not. And uh, also the question is who should decide should we do this? Uh, who is benefit of it at all? Who's benefit the most? Are those the parents, the children, or the state, or the world itself? And uh, what does it to design baby that will be enhanced or better in some way really means? What does it mean uh, to enhance someone? If we enhance every single characteristic that one person has, and we look that person as one whole, would that person be better? Or that person will be 
uh, just uh, different in one unpredictable way. Because uh, sometimes if one person has more of all the abilities, maybe the person will feel pressure to work uh, on all of its talent and uh, doesn't uh, have that fulfillment. And uh, there is uh, also, um, also uh, we can look about uh, the opinion of Aristotle on this because he said that uh, to, in order to lead a happy life we should steer clear from all the extremes so we can never uh, have too much of, from anything or too little to anything and that's true virtues just uh, stick to the middle for example, if you want to be, uh, uh, if we said that some person is brave, then it means that person doesn't take a risk that is not rational, and that person uh, doesn't uh, pull back in uh, some really scary situations. That means that person just have enough courage to do the right thing in some dangerous situation, but it doesn't go to them without a reason. And the uh, question is, uh, should we allow a different ways of being or is different uh, ways of being uh, just a uh, real value that is over some, uh, over the measure of some characteristics? Because if we make everybody as perfect as we can, it can lead to the situation when everybody, every, all the persons are alike. And if everybody is alike, then everybody is easy exchangeable. It seems like it will be a society where all the persons um, are exchangeable and more like things, more like films. So, should the parents be the one that uh, should decide on this question? Some of the philosophers will say that uh, parents should ex actually decide on this question and uh, they should uh, just enhance and design their children on uh, any means because uh, they have a duty to create the best possible child as they could. And um, uh, in order to explain what's wrong with this, uh, I will mention the Leibniz and you probably uh, read about him in high school or heard something about his daily care, right? You remember that um, in order to reply to the, this argument that this uh, God doesn't exist because we have evil in this world, he created his defense of the God, his Theodikeia, uh, where he shows that uh, if, uh, we, if in the world uh, we have only good things and only people that do good, we wouldn't have free will. So this world is the uh, best of possible worlds because if we have only people that do good, we wouldn't have free will, and it would be worse world. Uh, uh, so in all order to have a better world, we need both light and shadow. We need uh, both uh, opposites to make uh, it sensible. So uh, it seems like um, also a world where uh, all children were enhanced both cognitively and morally will be the world where we wouldn't have um, free will, where everybody will be the same. So maybe it wouldn't be a better world and maybe the children that will be enhanced to the maximum wouldn't be the uh, best children at all. It's a question how, to, how, ever, how we can ever decide what is best possible child. So um, why the uh, parents should be uh, the ones that are deciding on this at all. First of all, uh, children take a big amount of their lives. They spend a lot of time with them and uh, already now parents uh, have big influence on their children not only through genes but also through uh, spending time with them, uh, uh, preparing food for them, supplying the uh, education, the toys, uh, everything, so they are already influence them a lot. And uh, one more reason to decide on this way will be 
to remember that uh, people should have a freedom to, uh, to their reproductive choice. Also Buchanan uh, argued for this and he thought that uh, parents have a right to, to their reprodu uh, reproductive freedom on the basis of uh, self-determination because uh, it is um, something that has to do the most with uh, themselves and also it, has, it is related to the individual well-being and the quality of opportunity. And one more reason is that uh, because um, some of the philosophers think that uh, intentions of parents go on the same line with the intentions uh, of uh, children and that uh, they have best intentions for children so it shouldn't be a problem on this level interest shouldn't compl conflict but this is not clear at all for example um, I put here uh, Ingmar Bergman uh, book Best Intentions. It's a book, a biographical book about the life of his parents, where he shows that if uh, the best intentions of his grandmother were done, he wouldn't be born at all. And if his uh, best, if best intentions of his father, who is a priest, to keep his job and. Um, uh, make everything he can for the small community will make his life much worse and he wouldn't uh, be the same person and got the same opportunity to uh, work and maybe he wouldn't uh, be become so famous uh, movie director as we know it today and maybe he wouldn't have so much influence on our society and also there is a problem of um, self-evaluation because uh, many parents are evaluating themselves on such a way that um, they think they are better than they are and that their decisions are smarter than they actually are so this bias is uh, dangerous they don't have some objective perspective perspective is also always all, uh, of course always subjective but many of people tend to overrate uh, their uh, way on which they look things, so this can also be problematic. So, uh, should the children be the one that are deciding? Of course, it is clear that it's their life, so they should choose, but only thing that is clearer than that is that in this case they cannot choose on any way. So, uh, one thing that we should ask, like uh, although we, uh, they cannot give the assent, their assent is that uh, would they regret our decision later because uh, when we are thinking about morality of our decision we ask ourselves uh, not only uh, about the person that are close to us but also the, uh, uh, for the well-being of the person that are uh, remote in space but uh, it is not just uh, that remoteness is space matter, there is also remoteness of time. So we should ask uh, ourselves whether the future people will regret that decision. So um, should the society be the one that, is, uh, uh, that could decide on this topic? Should the world be the one <laughs> that is deciding because the, at the end uh, this decision will change the world for sure uh, that is the question or um, if uh, we accept uh, and um, uh, permit the designing of the babies will that make uh, our world something like uh, utopian world from <laughs> this Aldous Huxley book, Brave New World. I don't know if you have read it. So, anyone? <laughs> okay, um, I'll shortly, short, uh, shortly explain what it's about. Uh, you probably read Plato's Republic. I see a philosophers among you. <laughs> or you rem remember that uh, from high school that Plato considered that society should be uh, divided um, on people who are uh, 
more smart, to be a philosopher, people who are more brave, uh, to be warriors, and of people who are moderate, to be workers. And uh, also there shouldn't be parents at all, but uh, children should belong to the community, so everybody will look after all the children the same. Although some philosophers said that in that case nobody will look after children because there are no ones. So the brave new world uh, is making some parallels of this. Uh, Plato considered that this whole world will be stable, that it will be happy because everybody is getting uh, the job they are uh, made to do. But in a brave new world we see um, that this way, uh, what is wrong with this? Because uh, if we just design the people so that some of them will be alpha males and females, some beta, some gamma, and they are already predicted to do some kind of job. In this world they don't have a mother or father. Everything is uh, just predestinated for them. Like they will get a job, they will have the food on the table, they will have a um, uh, short-term relationship and everything. So basically they will be happy. But this the world will be boring, cold, and um, there wouldn't be fun at all. So this you can easily see in this book that that doesn't make a world better place. So it is a question if we like some uh, philosophers like Savulescu uh, propose should make this enhancement uh, in designing of the babies obligatory. Uh, how will it affect our world? How will it affect society? Some of philosophers uh, argue that uh, maybe it will be better to make it a free choice and maybe even uh, just few individuals that will be enhanced to be extremely smart could benefit, uh, could uh, make benefits for society because then we will have, uh, uh, for example, some uh, products or some uh, patents they will make, uh, some new inventions. So uh, even on that small scale, they will make a world better place. And uh, one more question is that um, uh, is necessarily even even if we uh, presuppose that that will make the world better place, would it be necessarily better for the individuals in that world, for the individuals in that society? And um, just to illustrate uh, this, um, the problem that this is leading to, uh, here I mention one story. <clears throat> because the problem is that if we consider making uh, enhanced people that will uh, make the world better place and everybody will agree that they are better, we come to the problem that we can't actually uh, decide what are the characteristics that will make uh, one person better. What is uh, actually the person that will be uh, so good that every, uh, it will be uh, considered as, as such by all the people. And uh, here is uh, one of our uh, stories that um, where son and uh, father go uh, travel with donkey and everybody who is uh, uh, on their way have their own opinion of the way how they should travel. So at the end they uh, just realize that they can make, can't make everybody satisfied. And there is no such a thing uh, or such a characteristic that will be good for everyone. And so I quoted uh, Steve Jobs here, if you want to make everybody happy, don't be a leader, sell ice cream. And even uh, people who sell ice cream maybe will be criticized by vegans because there is milk in it. So, <laughs> so do we uh, need to make such a change? Do we need to enhance people and design babies? What it will be made. Um, Ursula on the last uh, lecture already mentioned this question how we should change the world or should we change the world. So uh, now we are continuing again. I will ask you. <laughs> what do you think? In a good way. 
Thank well, you. should we enhance people? Should we design babies? And if we design them, uh, what should we change? Should we change just uh, their uh, some characteristic that are medical trends uh, in sense that they will develop uh, some disease later probably or some disability? Or should we edit also the characteristic that are not related to the health? I mean, I think we should change the diseases. Well, I mean, genes for the diseases. That's, I think, the best thing that we will come up with the genetics. But if we make everybody perfect, I think that's like similar, similar with cloning. Everybody will be the same with the same characteristics, but only when maybe physical appearance will be different. I think that's that's not something that will move the world in a progressive way. Will be stagnate, I think. Will stagnate the world. I don't know. I mean, that's my opinion. But do you think it should be obligatory or a matter of free choice? I mean, for the diseases, I think it should be obligatory. And the rest of it, I don't know, maybe. I, I don't know. But there are still like uh, thousands of diseases that are not genetically programmed, that are not uh, due to bad genes or something. So, uh, again, investing money in such things to edit out the diseases that are um, influenced by genes uh, doesn't make much sense because we still have all the other diseases that we can't control with CRISPR or something. But you will eliminate all the diseases that are caused by genes. I mean, that's definitely the benefit of it. But, uh, like, what's the percentage of that benefit? I mean... Oh, but, but you, can, you can enhance the general immune system also. Uh, you, can, you can do uh, genetic enhancement which will enhance the immune system against, yes, uh, against different pathogens which are not... Uh, yes, but you don't need to do that before a child is born. You can do that in a uh, living uh, organism. I, I mean, not at the not moment, but yeah. it will be made possibly, possible. Possibly, I mean, possibly yeah. it will be, okay, of course. Well, possibly it will be. I, mean, I think but that's what I... It, it will be easier in any case. It will be easier in any case to do uh, the sort of, uh, of uh, embryonal well, this other sort. Yes, but in this case, if you can do it while the child is alive, he can choose for himself. Oh, okay. Well, in that sense, yes. But why will the child choose against uh, enhancing his immune system? And there is a difference between contagious diseases and non-contagious diseases. So, the mandatory uh, elimination vaccination of contagious diseases that's uh, morally uh, justified but uh, to prescribe as uh, uh, something mandatory the elimination of diseases by genetic intervention which are not contagious that's that means then if we go that way that we should also outlaw various other activities that are unhealthy so we should ban smoking, which I have nothing against it, but um, we, we should that do definitely. We should prescribe physical exercise for all, because it's healthy, healthy food. So you know, we know what healthy food is, because all that contributes to our health. So if we make this, what this gentleman says here obligatory, then we have to uh, make a mandatory whole range of healthy activities. And that goes possibly too far. Concerning the enhancement issue, and if we say we should not bio-enhance people, okay, but then we ask the question, what's the difference between enhancement that is not bioengineered and other enhancements? So we enhance, we have enhanced ourselves a lot through our history. We can fly, we can uh, uh, drive 200 hours, uh, uh, 200 uh, kilometers per hour. We can, uh, we, we don't have prejudices about uh, 
so many things. We we know that the Earth is not flat, and so we have all kinds of of enhancements, technological and intellectual, behind ourselves. So what is the difference between enhancing ourselves by education and by research, science, and so on, and by bio means, biological, bi biomedical means? So what's the, that, that's the point. What is the difference between the two? In, 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 a, in a moral sense, I'm not talking about the fact that bioenhancers might be dangerous, some of them. So that's, but if they're safe and effective, let's take only them. What is then the difference between enhancement by education and enhancement by biomedical needs? The moral difference, that's still not clear. Some people would say that education is dangerous as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for some people, <laughs> it is definitely a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But Well, that's the, uh, the whole problem, because we can never know, is this really actually safe, or it is not? Because um, for now, there are many problems. But will it develop to the level that it will be totally safe? We can't know. On the basis of... Uh, the facts that we have now and information that we have now, <clears throat> it's hard to say. Yes, but all, all kinds of activities are, we have no certainty about anything uh, at all. We, uh, so we have developed as humanity the capacity, the capacity to destroy ourselves. So we have embarked on an extremely dangerous activity because there are various ways now uh, we can destroy uh, uh, humanity. So does that mean that we should have stopped all science because we could have, and we did create the possibility of self-annihilation? So that, that just depends on you need to have a sort of quantitative estimate of, of the risks involved. Yeah. It's sort of more the more uh, sort of I don't know simulation or scenario building or like you know calculate uh, if you are a utilitarian or consequentialist and uh, then you just you just need to, to to calculate what risk is bigger which risk is bigger yeah yes and then uh, so I, I wouldn't be able to say in principle prohibit enhancement by enhancement of course not. and uh, uh, even even an enhancement by enhancement that prolongs our life or makes our immune system healthier. Or this is also an enhancement to glasses, for instance, that might be considered as an enhancement. But okay, but, but even cognitive enhancements to perform better. So, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't see how, uh, how that can be justified after all, all the work I have done with that. Starting from the first arguments, were that it is uh, unnatural or against God's ordinance or whatever. These are arguments that are not used anymore. In the beginning, the early 80s, well, you hear it from time to time, but the, the Leon Kass and other uh, uh, people of that time, they, they, are, they are pretty much, let's call them outdated. So that argument about natural and unnatural is less. I mean, I'm talking about the developed world, it's less yeah. pronounced now. But now we uh, have a little bit more specific topic, uh, because uh, here is in question, should we yeah. design babies and uh, to, wa uh, to what extent? Should parents be permitted to design the ch children? So yeah. what do you guys think? You didn't say anything? <laughs> Well, I think that uh, parents should have the right to enhance their baby. Mm, uh, on which way? Uh, definitely to eliminate it, to eliminate all the disease, uh, all the diseases, and well, I don't know about the, some physical characteristics. Uh, we should think about it uh, when we are up to something that uh, is possible. I think we cannot now. Uh, change the physical appearance of the baby, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not thinking about it, but uh, diseases, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 
and should uh, parents, for example, add some genes that will uh, probably grow to the uh, child uh, that will be talented, for example, for music, sports? And well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a little bit complicated. If uh, there is a way that the child can quit <laughs> that uh, change later, maybe I would agree, but now I'm not quite sure. Okay. So, so Bulesko says that uh, because parents uh, bear much of the burdens of having children and the responsibilities and so on and so on, that they have a justifiable interest as he formulates it in enhancing that child. And the other argument he uses is that the lottery of nature, the sort of lottery of nature, uh, is uh, not a morally superior mechanism than conscious enhancement. And the third argument, the argument that bioconservatives use and that relates to uh, egalitarianism, interestingly, is by bioconservatives, that we get a two-tier society of the enhancing the other.